Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. This is the podcast where we have digital discussions in the worlds of TV, social media, pop culture, sports. Sports, music, everything, really, we talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Peter Miliotis, and you know me as on Twitter as PD Beats. And we are talking to a writer, a TV writer, known for his work on one of the greatest sitcoms of all time, Seinfeld. We are speaking to Peter Melman. Peter, welcome to Pop Turnative. Thank you. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. I hope we're going to be talking about all those subjects you talked about, you know, sports, media, everything. We could talk about, yeah, we will talk about it all. I want to hit every last area just to show my versatility. Oh, absolutely. And actually, it's funny you say that because we talk about Seinfeld being, they say, a show about nothing, where I find it funny how it does touch on, like, any every episode touches on, some, like, music, sports, everything is in an episode. They You guys put everything in there. That's very true. You know, the whole thing about a show about nothing is so misleading in a way, you know, because... We did pretty much tackle everything. I mean, you know, most shows are shows about nothing. This happened to be the show that was about everything. I mean, it really dealt with, you know, every issue you could imagine. But, um, you know, I'm always amazed that so many shows actually just deal with the X number of characters that are on the show and basically nothing else. I know. So, it's... Yeah, it's... it's... It's a very misleading thing, that show about nothing thing. So, um, t talk a little bit about how you got involved in writing Seinfeld. When did that all start? It happened um, very much by accident, um, which kind of drives everybody who's trying to break into this industry and asks for my advice. They hear how I broke in and it makes them crazy, but... <laughs> You know, I lived in New York um, in throughout the 80s. And then um, at the in the last couple of years I lived in New York, I met Larry David a couple of times. And, you know, I, we didn't spend much time together, but, you know, we got along well, whatever. And um, so then I moved to Los Angeles just for kind of a life change. And um, like a year later, I bumped into Larry on the street. Bumped into is the key thing. Always remember that it's all about luck. I mean, you know. Um, and he said, I'm doing this little TV show, Jerry Seinfeld. Maybe you could uh, write a script. I guess he didn't even really know that I was a journalist and I didn't really write dialogue. But, you know, I was in L.A. and, you know, went in Rome. So, uh, you know, he asked me to give him a writing sample that he could pass on to Jerry. And um, I actually passed on an essay that I wrote in the New York Times. It was kind of a humor essay. And uh, Jerry just took a shine to it, and I got a chance to write a script. And uh, next thing you know, I was loaded. No, absolutely, because, <laughs> you know, many episodes. And, you know, for people that don't know, I'm sure a lot of people know that you've written episodes, like you've written, you know, the Yada Yada episode, the shrinkage episode and one of my favorites, you know, the double dip episode. Um, and, and it's, it's, it's one of those things where you get it back to the show about nothing, where there's so many things that happen. Um, what I've seen previous interviews that you've done where you talk about, you know, yada, yada and how it came, that episode came to be and how you wrote that episode. So it is safe to say that a lot of these episodes that were written in Seinfeld, came from stuff that actually happened based on real life experiences. Yes. Um, you know, the funny thing was, I mean, the most difficult transition for me personally was, you know, I had been in journalism, which is a field where you're basically looking out at the world and reporting on it. Seinfeld really required you to look inward at your own thoughts and the, the little things that have happened to you and the little things that have kind of tripped a little thing in your brain for a second, but then you let them flip out of, you know, they, they fizzle out of your head. So, um, you know, using your own experiences was something that Larry David was incredibly great at. 
and he was amazing at just you know catching those tiny little thoughts that filled his head so you know something like you know double dipping i happened to be at a party and saw somebody freak out that somebody had double dipped the chip and you know coming up with the phrase double dip was no stroke of genius you know that was kind of easy you know yada yada was very strange i had been at the show for you know six seven years already and somehow i thought back to a lunch i had had in new york 10 years earlier with the magazine editor and she had said yada yada and i'd never heard anyone say that and i never heard anyone say it again and i was just thinking it's so funny if you use that you could cover up you know all kinds of sins by just saying and yada yada and shortening a bad story so you know coming up with ideas for episodes was um the most important thing that you could do uh, as a seinfeld writer and um you know, you take them from wherever you could get them. For sure. People have referred to Seinfeld as iconic. What do you think about that That word, iconic? What do you personally think about that, Peter, when people say Seinfeld is iconic? I don't exactly know what to make of that. Um, I always think of, like, when somebody comes up with a word, like, iconic for the show, it's just that they've heard so many other descriptions for it, they need another word that's even bigger. You know, the, the show was groundbreaking. Okay, well, enough people have said it's groundbreaking. What else can we call it? You know, then it gets too iconic. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even really know what that's supposed to mean. You know? <laughs> yeah, no, I, and you, you mentioned groundbreaking, and one of my favorite things about TV right now is ensemble casts and guest starring and guest stars on TV shows. That's my favorite. I love, you know, Brooklyn Nine-Nine is one of my favorite shows right now and how they use kind of their guest stars and different characters coming in and different characters recurring is one of my favorite things. Seinfeld, um, one could make the argument, kind of started a lot of that where you had um, people that are known for being on one episode, like the Soup Nazi um, or, you know, uh, the close talker, like there's got there, there are characters that have become, well, I don't know if we could use iconic again, iconic. Yeah. <laughs> but like, what do you think about that? Cause that is really shows how powerful the fan base of the show is for someone to get known for one episode yeah. Well, two, because they come back in the finale, but you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, um, you know, it's something that happened accidentally, you know, we just would think of, you know, a funny idea for a character and somehow it would just, you know, if with the right casting, you know, it's, it's real alchemy, you know, you get, you come up with a character and then you get the exact right casting and it turns out incredible, you know, like, you know, you get Wayne Knight to play Newman and it's amazing, or you get Brian Cranston to play Dr. Watley, the dentist, and you know it goes through the roof and um you know then you get but you know these a lot of it is just great actors who you know and really good casting you know like terry hatcher or um you know they're just amazing actors who they happen to get i mean you think about wayne knight playing newman i mean he's so brilliant at it you know they a lot of these actors take the characters beyond anything that, you know, any writer could have imagined. This question might be difficult because it would be like asking you who your favorite, um, who your favorite kid is. But do you have an episode of Seinfeld that you've written that you, that's like your quote unquote favorite you've ever written? Or is that hard to do? Um... You know, I have a lot of episodes that I really like and, you know, a bunch of episodes that I thought stunk that I wrote. But, um, you know, I like the, um, you know, the Double Dip episode with Terry Hatcher. And, um, you know, I really like that one a lot just because if you watch the first act, which is, you know, the first part of it before the commercial break, it feels like it goes by in like, 30 seconds it's so fast and the stories roll out so quickly and the plot happens so fast that's what always made a great episode 
I like uh, the shrinkage episode a lot just because it's like a French farce and because Elaine has a huge part in it. And I never thought that you could have a really good episode unless, um, you know, Julia's part was really strong. Mm -hmm. And I also really, you know, I like yada yada. That's pretty good. Um, but I like Spongeworthy a lot just because, um, you know, it was very topical at the time. I, I, you know, I'd just been driving in a car and I heard that the Today Sponge was going out of business and, you know, immediately thought, oh my God, what if Elaine is a sponge user? She, she buys out the Upper West Side worth of sponges and then she has to, you know, rethink her screening process for anybody she sleeps with. You know, I just love that an idea came out so fast. And also the thing about, you know, Kramer not wearing the AIDS ribbon. I love oh. I loved when the show would like slam liberals, you know, which I am and which everybody writer on the staff was. But, you know, we kind of slammed ourselves, you know. So and you wrote that, but you were you wrote that episode? Uh, Spongeworthy one? Yeah. Is that the, the ribbon one? Is that the Spongeworthy? Yes, that's that's part of Spongeworthy. Yeah, that because uh, that because basically those two guys who with, with the ribbon we see them in one of my favorite episodes, yeah. the Soup Nazi. But just that whole those two characters are, are great. Yeah, yeah, I love those guys. Absolutely, another episode that's uh, one of my favorites is uh, the dinner party. Just because there's so many things going on in that episode, they go to the bakery. Oh you know, yeah. The, the wine and he wants to bring Pepsi and not wine and they got to get changed. There's like that. That's what I think. Like you have like, I think with commercials, I think the, it's like 22 minutes, 23 minutes is like the 22. Seinfeld has been able to put a lot in 22 minutes. What yeah. do you think is attributed to that? It's just the amazing cast and crew. Is it just a constant flow of ideas and that, that it's an everyday life, slice of life show? What do you think about that? Um, well, the everyday slice of life kind of show is the most important thing to me. You know, I always wanted to keep tiny. I wanted my stories to be tiny little slice of life stuff. You know, when the show got a little bigger, you know, you know, Puerto Rican day parades and stuff like that. I really wasn't interested in that stuff. You know, it didn't, you know, the Frogger, I don't even know what that is. And, you know, making salads in the sink, you know, like I, I, that, I don't even know what that stuff was. And, you know, but, um, you know, keeping those episodes really small was um, really important and great for the show. And um, as far as squeezing so much in to 22 minutes, You'd be shocked at how long the first edit of an episode would be. I mean, the contest was probably 10 minutes over time after the first edit. Wow. And um, we, would, we got really great at just slicing and dicing and cutting things. It actually made the episodes better. Of course, when you're that much lo too long, then the last 30 seconds of cuts would be really painful. But, you know, if we were five minutes long on an episode, we were thrilled because, you know, we'd edit it and it would come out so much better because it would be really, really fast. And then once in a while, you know, we got to the point where the show was so popular that we could actually ask NBC for an extra 30 seconds if we were really in trouble. Or in the case of Yada Yada, we got an extra three minutes. The original wow. airing of that episode was 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that's really interesting how it is. Because I don't think people realize that. You know, you look at the... Like, I don't think people realize that there's like seven or eight minutes worth of commercial on cable television. I don't think... I think that's something that's overlooked a lot. Yeah. I mean, the, cutting it down for a syndication for those cable episodes was even shorter. I think it was, you know under 22 minutes oh yeah no it's it's crazy now i'm going to put you to the test because in the intro i mentioned everything we talk about and i'm going to ask some questions um it's a there are two questions so question one um you know we cover you know music sports on a lot of different things so question one is uh in regards to um 
Was that important to, we mentioned Slice of Life, was that important to kind of incorporate music and sports and certain like pop culture references into Seinfeld when you were writing it? And part two is involving social media. How? What do you kind of think about the social media landscape in terms of how it's kind of embraced and kind of kept Seinfeld going and going and kind of making it current all the time? I think that's about the only good thing about social media. Really? I think other than the fact that it's extended Seinfeld's life and promoted the show, that's the only good thing about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's not totally true. But, you know, I, I used to think that, like, you know, 10 years ago, I used to think that everything for every good, great thing about the Internet, there was kind of an equal and opposite bad thing. Now I think for every good thing about the Internet, there's like eight equal and opposite bad things. Um as far as pop culture references and you know i think i don't i don't know if they were important but i think sports references were kind of more important than pop culture or you know especially music there wasn't really that much music unless it was super convenient you know like elaine going war what is it good for you know that was hysterical (laughs) um but you know we didn't you know a lot of it was kind of following larry david's references you know and the, you know larry is very into sports and luckily you know i, I have a big sports background and, uh, as a sports writer and i worked for howard cosell and you probably don't know who that is um and uh, so sports references were really good you know like when we were talking about whether you know the terry hatcher character's breasts were real and jerry was going you know it would be like finding out that mickey mantle corked his bat you know it it always came down to sports references. If you can make the right sports references, it was always very much appreciated by Larry and Jerry. No, oh, absolutely. Well, I just want to say that everyone in this house, you know, when we get home from work, you know, we're watching Seinfeld. That's what everyone like kind of falls asleep to. So thank you for writing an amazing show that – I never ever get sick and tired of. Well, uh, you know, I did it. I did it all for you, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Peter, thank you so much for for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. And uh, any closing remarks? Um, where can people follow you on social media? The floor is yours. Um, that's my dog. <laughs> His name is Ike. Um. You know, I'm on Twitter, Peter Melman. I'm on Facebook at Peter Melman. And um, that's about it. That ought, that ought to keep you up to date with the absolutely nothing that goes on in my life. <laughs> well, maybe you're trying to say something because we start. We had a whole conversation about how it's nothing. A show about nothing isn't really about nothing. It's about a lot of stuff. So maybe your life is involve a lot of stuff, but you think it's nothing. So... Yeah, well, I don't like to. Th- I, I I don't like to put too much thought into that. You know, uh, my feeling is that you know my life shouldn't require my full attention. You know, be, be, being me should be like a part time job. <laughs> for sure. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, and I wish you all the best. Uh, likewise, I'm sure. Good luck with the show, and uh, it was really a pleasure. And thanks for having me on. No problem. Well, this has been Popternative YouTube.com slash Popternative for previous episodes, and until next time, this is Peter Melman. And PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.